Welcome, fellow recovering traditionalists, to episode 218. They should already know this. Three coaching strategies that actually work. They should already know this. We covered this last year. Why don't they remember how to fill in the blank? If you're a math coach, I'm guessing you've heard some version of this lately. Maybe a lot. And here's the thing. Teachers aren't wrong. Students should know it. But they don't. So now what? That's what we're digging into today because post pandemic students are different. The research backs this up. Students are nearly half a grade level behind in mathematics. Social emotional challenges are through the roof, and teachers are exhausted. So the coaching strategies that worked before, they're not landing the way they used to. Today, I'm giving you practical strategies, three of them, to help teachers shift from they should know this, which leads to frustration and blame, to here's what we can do about it, which leads to hope and action. Welcome to Build Math Minds, where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. Okay, so here's the reality. Yeah, they should know it, but they don't. So now what? What are we going to do? Because we can't keep teaching as if students have the foundations they're supposed to have because the data tells us they don't. So let's dive into those three strategies to help teachers get past. They should know this. And if you are a teacher listening who doesn't have a math coach, you can use these three these strategies with your teaching team and do them together. Strategy number one. Help teachers identify the actual gap, not their perceived gap. The first strategy is to help teachers get specific about what students don't know. Because here's what happens. A teacher says they don't know their multiplication facts, and then they just kind of shut down. They think, well, I can't teach division if they don't know multiplication. So we're kind of stuck right here. But when you dig deeper, you often find that it's not that students don't know any multiplication facts. It's that they don't know them all. Or they know some, but they can't retrieve them quickly. Or they could do like the twos and fives, but they struggle with the six, sevens, and eights. So your coaching move is to help the teacher identify the actual gap. Here's what you can say. Let's figure out exactly what they do know and what they don't. Can you give them a quick assessment, like not a time test, just something to see which facts they know and which ones they're still working on? And if you are a member of the Build Math Mind site, one of my favorite activities is the known facts and the unknown facts. So search that inside the membership area. So if they've already done an assessment, you could ask them things like, looking at the data, what patterns do you see? Are there specific facts that most students are missing? Or is it more about speed than accuracy? Are they getting them right? They're just slow, okay? Once you help the teacher see the specific gap, it becomes less overwhelming. Instead of they don't know their facts, which feels impossible to fix, it becomes most of them know twos, fives, and tens, but they're still struggling with sixes, sevens, and eights which feels a whole lot more manageable, especially when you connect it to the twos, fives, and tens. And here's the key. You're not dismissing their frustration. It's real, but you're redirecting it into something actionable. You might say something like, I hear you. It is frustrating that they don't have all of their facts yet, but let's focus on what we can do. And if we know they're solid in twos, fives, and tens, we can use those as anchors to help them figure out the others. Let me show you what I mean. And then it gives you an avenue into helping them move forward. So now we are moving from a complaint to an actual strategy that they can use in their classroom with their students. Strategy number two as a coach is to reframe the quote unquote catching up 
into building forward. Here's what teachers often think. I need to stop everything and go back and reteach what they should have learned last year. And that creates this panic, right? Because they're like, I don't have time to go back and still cover everything else that I'm supposed to teach this year. That seems impossible. So they either try to cram it in in those catch-up sessions that feel really disconnected from what they're currently teaching, or they just skip the foundational stuff and hope that students can kind of keep up. Neither of those will work. So here's the reframe that you want to help teachers make. We're not going back. We're building forward. Well, what does that mean? It means you help teachers see that they can address foundational gaps within the context of what they are currently teaching, right? They don't have to do something separate. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're coaching a fourth grade teacher who's supposed to be teaching multi-digit multiplication, but her students are struggling still with fluency with their single-digit multiplication facts. They're just not solid yet. They're not coming quickly. Um, So instead of saying something like, okay, let's drop everything and we're going to drill the facts for two weeks, you can help her see how she can build fact fluency and strategies while teaching multi-digit multiplication. So you might say something like, what if, as you're teaching four times 23, you do a number string like two times six, then four times six, two times eight, four times eight, two times 11, four times 11. Are you guys seeing a pattern? Then we do two times 23. And guess what? Four times 23. Then we could do two times 45. Hmm, how might that connect to four times 24? four times 45. So two times 45, sorry, I might've said that wrong, two times 45, and then four times 45. And then you might finish it up with one that doesn't have what I call the helper problem. What would four times 67 be? This number string allows students to be practicing their facts and they're connecting a strategy that they have for single digit multiplication to the multi-digit numbers at the same time. They're not separate right? Or what if you suggested to the teacher that they start off the lesson with a five-minute number talk using the fact that they're working on. So they're struggling with sixes and sevens. So you do a number talk around six times eight, or maybe you do seven times nine with the students, where they share the different ways that they all think about it. They're building their fluency, but they're also being reminded of strategies that they have And you're embedding it into the regular instruction. And then those strategies might also be used when you work into the multi-digit multiplication of the main meat part of the lesson that you're doing. Okay, So you want to encourage them to take that thinking that they did in that little number routine and use it the rest of the lesson. The key message that you're trying to give the teachers is you don't have to choose between addressing gaps and moving forward. You can do both at the same time, but they just may not know how to do that. So that's the job of the coach. And here's why this is so powerful is because it takes away the guilt and the panic that so many teachers are feeling. They feel like they are failing their students by not stopping everything to reteach. You want to empower them because now they have a plan to do that while also still, quote unquote, covering the standards that they need to cover right now. Okay, so strategy number three as a coach, when a teacher is saying they should know this, but we know they don't, strategy number three is to normalize the struggle and the timeline that it's going to take. Because here's what's happening. Teachers are comparing their current students to pre-pandemic students, and that comparison is making them feel like failures. They're thinking, my third graders should be here by now. What am I doing wrong? And the answer is nothing. You're not doing anything wrong. Your students are starting from a completely different place. So the coaching moves that you need to do with with the teachers is to normalize that struggle and reset expectations around the timeline. Now, if only we can get the higher ups in education to realize this, but logically you are going to have teachers that push back and they're going to say, but they're going to be tested on grade level standards. I can't just lower my expectations. 
And here's how I want you to think about a response. Say something like, I'm not saying lower your expectations. I'm saying adjust your timeline. We're still aiming for that grade level standard, but we're going to scaffold the heck out of it as we get them there. And we're going to celebrate the growth along the way. The truth is that math recovery is taking longer than reading recovery since the pandemic. So if it feels like it's taking forever to get students where they need to be, that's because it is. It is taking longer. But that doesn't mean it's not happening. It's just not as fast as we're used to. The goal here is to help teachers shift from this, they should already know it, which is frustration and and blaming, right? Teachers before parents, all of this society as a whole. And we need to help them move into, they don't know this yet, but here's how we're going to help them get there, which is all about action and hope. And that's what we need right now. Honestly, that mindset sh- mindset shift, that's hard to say. Mindset shift is one of the most powerful things you can do as a coach right now. Okay. So let's recap those three strategies for addressing the they should already know this mindset. Because reality is, yeah, they should, but they don't. So what are we going to do? Here's the first thing to help, a reminder. Help the teachers identify the actual gap. Get specific about what students do and don't know so that it feels manageable and not overwhelming. Strategy two was to reframe the catching up as building forward. Show teachers how to address those foundational gaps within the context of current instruction so that they don't have to choose between the two options that they feel like they have. And then strategy three is to just normalize the struggle and the timeline. Help teachers see that where students are isn't a reflection of them. It's just the reality that we're all working with right now. And progress does take time. Now, I know that this is just scratching the surface. There's so much more we could talk about when it comes to post-pandemic students and teaching them, which brings me to the virtual mass summit. It is coming up soon. If you're feeling like your coaching strategies need an update for this generation of students, I've got some sessions you absolutely need to attend. First off is Jen Hunt. She is doing a session called Coaching Math Teachers Who Teach a Different Generation. Like, that's exactly what we've been talking about. She's diving into research on how post-pandemic students are different, and she's giving research-backed strategies and ready-to-use tools that will help you help the teachers adapt, okay? Now, there are three more sessions that will help. Heck, even send them to the registration page for the summit so that they can attend and watch some of these sessions themselves. Because sometimes it helps for the teachers that we work with to hear it from an outside source. And these are some of the best. Graham Fletcher is starting off the entire summit with a keynote on asset-based assessment. And this is the heart of what we've been talking about here, using assessments to see what kids can do and then working to guide their learning through the progression of mathematics. And this is the reframe that teachers need. Annalise Record has a specific session for third through fifth grade teachers on building multiplicative reasoning. And here's why this matters around this topic. So many upper elementary teachers are frustrated because their students are still using repeated addition or even counting instead of multiplicative reasoning. Annalise is going to acknowledge that that's where students currently are and then give teachers ways to move students forward forward in that progression. That's exactly the building forward, not going back approach that we've been talking about. And Dr. Sue Looney has a session that's for pre-K to two teachers on taking kids from naming to knowing when it comes to geometry. She's laying out the progression for developing geometry concepts so that teachers can see where students are in that progression and what comes next. So when teachers understand this progression, not just of geometry, but of any topic, they can meet students where they are and then move them forward instead of just being frustrated that they're not where they quote unquote should be. 
all four of these sessions will give you and your teachers tools to shift from the, they should know this, to here's where they actually are, and here's how we can move them forward. And they are completely free. Go to virtualmassummit.com and get registered. The sessions will be live on Feb February 28th and March 1st, but if you can't attend live, there is a limited replay. So get registered. You'll get the link to be able to attend live and watch the replay. There are over 30 sessions for coaches and elementary teachers to help you move forward, not move forward, build forward. I like that better. Not just moving past it, but we are building off of where they currently are. So go to virtualmasssummit.com to register for free. All right, my fellow recovering traditionalists, I hope this helped build your math mind so you can build the math minds of students. This episode is brought to you by the Build Math Minds PD site. If you're an elementary math coach or instructional coach and you love this episode, well, you need to come check us out. Whether you're supporting teachers with number sense, helping them move beyond worksheets, or trying to shift mindsets about what math teaching should look like, We've got the PD you need right at your fingertips. Learn more at buildmathminds.com slash BMM.